Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Gavi webinar series hosted by the HISP Center here at the University of Oslo. I see we're just a few minutes uh, past the hour, so I think we'll get right into it. Uh, um, so this uh, webinar is focused on the use of DHIS2 to support immunization supply chains. Um, just to then uh, state from the start that DHIS2 is not an ELMIS, it is not trying to replace that specific software for supply chain management, but rather a last mile solution, digitizing service delivery points, health facilities, and integrating that into the digital environment. And that's really the use case and the approach that we're taking, leveraging the use of DHIS2 in many different contexts. So um, the outcome level objective that we're looking to achieve is improvement of supply chain management, the availability of medicines, uh, the ability to make decisions uh, with that data, and then improving the overall health outcome. So really that's the uh, uh, approach and methodology we use. For this webinar specifically, we'll be then having three different uh, presentations. First, a country mapping of vaccine stock data in DHS2 instances. That will be done by Augustine Dushim and his Rwanda group. That'll be followed by um, an overview of Thrive 360 National Control Tower for immunization supply chain. So that is a project jointly with UNICEF um, which was implemented together with HISP Nigeria, and we'll have Barnabas Akumba uh, presenting uh, an overview of those dashboards. And then third and uh, last will be George McGuire from the HISP Center here at the University of Oslo, uh, going over different data use potential uh, and capabilities with the data uh, that will be presented and possibilities for improving supply chain management and how this can actually be operationalized again uh, aiming at those improvements in the supply chain, uh, stock availability, and contributing to overall improved health outcomes. So welcome once again, and I'll hand over then to my colleague in his Rwanda, Augustine Dushin, to get us going. Over to you, Augustine. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, as uh, Bruno said, I'm Dushim Augustine from his Rwanda. I'm LMIS Implementer Specialist. So I'm talking about the country mapping of DHS2 for logistics regarding the vaccines. Uh, the objective of this uh, assessment was to find out uh, which uh, data uh, uh, for LMIs is collected into DHS2 and how this can be used to improve stock management and show other countries how this can be done. So there is a list of 13 countries that have been assessed. Uh, there is Burundi, Comoros, Congo, Brazza, uh, Djibouti, Central African Republic, Rwanda, Sudan, Chad, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Sao Tome, Principe, Cap Verde, and Angola. So there is a list of uh, criteria or information that have been assessed to be collected by each country in this program. Um, first of all, there is uh, a date of survey that has been collected. The elements information that is already available in DHS2 the answer was yes or no. The frequency of information that is collected, either by weekly, monthly, uh, or quarterly. The level of data collection, either by community level, facility level, district, or region. At uh, the level in which uh, this information is entered into DHS2. Uh, the information about uh, expiration. The dashboard to display this information. The stock on hand at the beginning of the period. The quantity issued, received, lost, or expired stock on hand at the end of the period, uh, replenishment and uh, uh, the type of data entry form that is used. So um, regarding the methodology, regarding the methodology, the assessment started on 4th to 14th February 2024. We have reviewed the available information regarding the stock in 2DHS2, we have worked with his teams, uh, our colleagues, for additional information and other clarification. Then we have completed the data collection tool. It was an Excel spreadsheet based on the information that have been downloaded in the reporting forms from DHS2. Then we have analyzed the data collected into DHS2. Uh, here uh, we have to note that only the availability of the reporting forms was assessed. The quality of information collected was not part of this assessment. The findings, uh, this is a summary of vaccine information that is already available in 2DHS2 by each country and by each information. Here, uh, yes, 
the Y stand for yes, means that this information is collected. And N stand for no, means that this information is not collected for this particular information and the particular country. We have to know that the key data on opening balance quantity should, quantity received, quantity lost, and closing balance is available in 2DHS2 for most of the countries. And most of these countries do not collect the product inf uh, uh, expiration information, replenishment, and there is no dashboards. The custom forms is the only, uh, the commonly used uh, reporting form used by different countries uh, that have been assessed. Regarding the number of information that is collected by each country, we can see that uh, five countries, this is Burundi, Central Africa, Chad, Mozambique, and Guinea-Bissau. Out of the 13 countries that have been assessed, seven criteria or seven information have been collected by these countries, while only four countries did not have any information regarding the stock data in DHIS2 for vaccines. Uh, regard regarding the uh, findings uh, by TAP information that is collected in 2DHS2, we can see that nine out of 13 countries that have been assessed, they are collecting uh, stock data on opening balance, quantity should, quantity received, closing balance, while only one country has information on expiration debt and replenishment recorded in 2DHS2. This is uh, the level where the stock data is collected and where the data is entered in 2DHS2. Out of the nine countries that have been assessed and collecting data on vaccines, five countries are collecting data at facility level, while the four are collecting at district level. Regarding the data entry in 2DHS2, only two facility two uh, countries are entering data at facility level, while the remaining seven are sending data from facility to be entered into DHS2 at the district level. This has the consequence that there is a delay on when data is available uh, compared to when data has been collected. And this delay can go up to one month. Uh, here we have to mention that all the assessed countries, they are collecting LMS uh, vaccines data as aggregate and on monthly basis. What type of data entry forms that is used to capture stock data in 2DHS2? Out of the nine countries that are collecting vaccines stock data in 2DHS2, eight of them are using the custom forms, while only one country is using the default form. This means that the custom data forms are mostly used, and these ones do not render on mobile devices as designed. For example, at uh, the tables, you'll find that they are displayed as a, a long list, and then the default data entry forms needs to be used. This is a list of indicators regarding the information that is already collected in 2DHS2 in different countries. This is a list of indicators that can be generated from this information already available. So uh, at facility level, we have this coefficient of variation, stock availability, stock percentage, stock count, stock out count, stock out length, stock coverage time, and so on. And this only require to collect the information into DHS2 regarding the quantity issued, stock on hand, and quantity issued, uh, stock on hand, and mark, mark complete on the forms uh, during the data entry process. On the district level, we need some uh, indicators that can be already generated because the information required is already available in 2DHS2. This is a percentage of district reporting uh, stock availability, percentage of district having electronic vaccines and supply stock management system, stock out event, and at national level, there is stock out events, stock out days at national level. And this requires only the stock on hand to be collected at the end of the period, the quantity issued, and the stock out days. This is already collected in 2DHS2, means that all these indicators can be generated because the required data elements are already collected in 2DHS2 for most of the countries. In summary, the findings show that the vaccine stock are collected as aggregate in 2DHS2 and on monthly basis. 
the key data on opening balance, quantity should, received, quantity lost, and closing balance is already collected in 2DHS2 for most of the countries. Uh, this means that uh, the indicators that are needed can be calculated for these countries based on the information that is already available in 2DHS2. The dashboards can also be developed based on this information available in DHS2. We have to mention that most of the countries do not collect information to DHS2 regarding the product expiration, replenishment, and they don't have these dashboards to show the collected information. Most of the countries are also using the custom forms to capture the vaccine stock data in 2DHS2. We mentioned that this, uh, the consequence of this is that the data collected cannot be used uh, at the mobile devices as intended means that a default data entry forms need to be configured. And also most of the assessed countries collect the data at facility level and they have to send data uh, to be installed at the district level, which may cause a delay to be available for this stock collected. Uh, for challenges, there is limited access uh, for supply chain teams. Generally, they don't have access in 2DHS2 for the stock data collected and there is issue of decision-making. Uh, the different There is a different configuration in each country uh, for the metadata, data entry forms, indicators, and uh, different visualizations. We understand that because the different countries have to respond to their current needs. However, the harmonization of this uh, configuration will be necessary to have integration, reporting, and uh, analysis. The indicators and the visualizations are not configured and then the data is not uh, used uh, for assessment. We have not been able to obtain information about the use and quality of the information that is available in 2DHS2. There are potential immediate uh, uh, improvement that can be made. Uh, the default forms need to be configured in 2DHS2 to facilitate the use of mobile devices. There is also need to configure the dashboards for data use and also configure the indicators to be uh, monitored on a regular basis for stock management. There is need to measure the timeliness and completeness of the data for the data, data quality uh, improvement. And also there is need to assess and improve the access to LMIS data and DHS2 by expanding it to a larger number of staff. This is called the breaking down silos. For potential improvement that can be done for long term. This intends to address a, a structural and underlying issues to stock availability by digitizing facilities and integration with the central LMIS or ERP. This needs to train the program staff on the use of the availability LMIS data into DHS2 and also expand the data entry to be done at facility level. Uh, this means uh, digitizing facilities instead of uh, making that entry at the district level. This will improve the timeliness and also improve the decision making, especially about the resupply. We also need to integrate DHS2 with the central LMIS for end-to-end -end visibility and logistic workflow integration. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll hand over to my colleague Barnabas for next presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Augustine, for the detailed presentation of yeah. the internet. Good afternoon, morning, depending on where you're connected from. Can someone confirm if you can hear me? I need a Wait, confirmation. Slightly, slightly far, but we hear you, Barnabas. OK. All right, so my name is Barnabas. And I'll be taking this session. Um, I work for HISP Nigeria, and I'll be taking the presentation on Track 360 Nigeria in Nigeria. So, as a background, Track 360 is a project that was uh, initiated by UNICEF uh, to help uh, bring together all sources of logistics data in order to help the logistic work working group of countries to be able to have an idea of what's happening and to aid them in taking informed decisions. 
So in Nigeria, we have made use of various sources of data. You would agree with me that data exists in different forms and sources. So here, Sorry about that, someone was not muted, so I had to mute. So uh, we have made use of, uh, we made use of about five sources of data in our setup. Uh, the routine data that exists on the NHMIS. Uh, it might interest you to know that Nigeria has a very robust national health management information system that is, is set up using DHIS2 and it collects data from uh, about 40,000 health facilities in the country. We also made use of country estimates that the country has for some of the sources of our data. Uh, the country also started using the NHMIS as the upstream logistic system uh, sometime last year, and uh, the data from that system was also used for this uh, setup. The mixed mix and monic estimates were also used, and of course, the last source of data there is the predictions based on the various uh, data that we have in this system. So uh, we we're able to set up several dashboards, about nine of them, uh, using the data from all those sources. The first one is the forecast and allocations. They are trying to look at data estimates that the country makes every year for their needs, and then the supplies that they can get and they provide to those various places where the data is used. Then uh, we have a dashboard for stock adequacy, uh, a dashboard for stock and consumption, stock status and coverage, stock trends, stock out events, zero dose children, immunization coverage trends, and uh, you can see the rest. So this first dashboard here that talks about forecast and applications here, if you look at the left hand side here, we're trying to compare two years, we're looking at the key tracer antigens, how much was forecasted as, uh, as what the country would need and how much was received within that period. Based on that data, we were able to now compute the such shortages, shortfalls by each of the antigens here and we could get very good output that will help the decision makers to take the necessary decisions that they need to keep. This might be a form of trying to make additional uh, purchases or the people in logistics know more about them. This is the short force put in the data format by states. And you can see for the key trace antigens, for each state you will be able to see where there is short force and then it should be able to source calculated data. We also set up a dashboard for stock adequacy. Here we're trying to look at the various parameters for stock availability. So here we're looking at uh, stock out, we're looking at uh, adequate stock, we're looking at understock, and we're looking at uh, overstock. So on the left-hand side, they are able to have like uh, a trend by month for each of the tracer antigens. And on the right-hand side there, you can see BCG being disaggregated based on the stock status for that particular period. Here, we also broke this down into the various antigens so that you could easily tell the performance or the availability of each of the antigens. And you would agree with me that this will be a very useful uh, indicator for those responsible for managing logistics and stocks at the various levels. Uh, this is at the national level. And the good thing about DHIS2 is that you can drill down to know where there are gaps and then you know what action you need to take. So people at the state level, when they log in, they're able to see the situation in their state. 
if you're an LGA person, you're able to see what is happening within your LGA. The stock status and current dashboard here, we're trying to calculate from the routine data, uh, the stock available and how long it can take. This was stock coverage in uh, coverage time in weeks. So the first one here, you could see BCG, the quantity of BCG available at this moment can take for 7.1 weeks. This is at the national level. Yeah, you drill down by state, you'll be able to see the situation state by state by LGA. You should be able to also see by LGA. And we're able to also get the spider map to show us the situation as well. The, this is uh, a continuation of the same dashboard where we're able to put this on maps. The data is to come with uh, several visualization tools. You can uh, analyze your data on maps, you can analyze your charts, pie charts, and what have you. So, we're trying to now make this available on maps so that you can know where this the performance is bad and you can easily intervene. Down here, you have the analysis by the various antigens. What we have on the screen now is the immunization coverage trends. What we have here is the immunization coverage trends. And what we've done here is to try to bring about, show the coverage by months. And you can see the charts are looking at January and uh, February. So we were able to compare this with the mix and mix, mix and unique estimates. You could see the performance as compared to those over estimates for the country. The stock trends is data from the routine NHMIF data, data that has been reported. You're looking at um, the stock available per month over the last 12 months for each of the antigens. And you can see, looking at this alone, you should be able to tell if there are data quality issues or not. You will see that the flow is, uh, is a kind of uh, smooth, no spikes. That uh, shows that there is no cause for alarm. Where you see a spike, you might want to also in, uh, should I say, investigate. We were able to also put up the zero dose treatment. These are estimates that the country makes. Uh, you might want to know that the country has about 775 LGAs, local government areas. That's what we call them in Nigeria. So this is just giving us the country is focused on 150 out of the 775 LGAs. So you would see that that's why the chart here is just pointing at some states. There are some states that don't have those LGAs. And the maps here also, you can see where the reds are. Those are the LGAs of focus for the zero dose children. This data was imported into the system. These are estimates that are done outside the system, but we're able to bring them into the system and then put them side by side with the data that is available in the system. Uh, the 20, uh, 2030 scorecard dashboard is another attempt to try to maybe give scores based on some key indicators. The indicators we used to be able to get this done were the 12 months stock out, zero dose coverages, and the EVM. So here, based on the performance in each of those indicators, a score was assigned to each location. And that is what brought about this. This is something that, as a country uses it, uh, a lot of tweaking will be done to make it conform to what the country needs. But at the moment, this is like work in progress, but the results seem to be very useful. This is another prediction based on uh, the average consumption per location. Here, we're using doing predictions based on the standard deviations and uh, trying to see locations where stockouts, there, there's a possibility of having stockouts as time moves on. So the usefulness of this is the decision makers should be able to know that oh, if particular attention is not paid to these particular locations, 
then in the future, in the nearest future, there will be stockouts in those locations. And we are all know the, the, should I say, the implication of having stockouts. These are stockout events. So when we talk about stockout events here, we're trying to look at a count of facilities where there was at least one stockout event within the period. So if you're looking at the four key uh, tracer antigens, uh, if amongst the four, there was one that had a stockout, that facility gets counted. So that's why we have this. And then by the right-hand side here, we'll be able to get a table that gives us a detail by antigen. And of course, you can drill down to each facility to know where there was a stockout for a particular antigen. I mentioned earlier that the country started the use of the open LMIS as the mainstream logistic management information system. So we're able to get the data that is available, the, or the opening balances at the LGA code stores into the system. Remember we said DHIS2 is used at the facility level, but we want to be able to also have an idea of what's available at the code stores. That will also help the NLWG and other key decision makers to know the, what they need to do. If they have enough at the code, uh, LGA code stores, they will know that they need to push them to where they are needed. So this is also a useful information that we're able to bring into the system and put it side by side with other sources of data. So I will stop my presentation here and I'll hand over to George McGuire from the Hip Center. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Barnabas. That's an impressive demonstration of the analysis that can be done. I'm going to start my screen sharing now. Okay, apologies if the screen doesn't have the perfect shape. It's because I have a large screen. Okay, Breno, can you confirm that you can see my screen correctly? That is perfect. Is yeah, okay, thank you. So I'm going to continue on what Augustine and Barnabas have presented. And my topic is data use and data quality analysis that can be done in DHIS2, but I will focus on the Thrive 360 and then make a short comment on other functionality. So this just as an overview on the data quality, it's an extensive topic. I'm presenting briefly what is available in DHIS2 and what is relevant for LMIS, for logistics management information systems in general, and for as well as for Thrive 360. So the first point is that the data that is collected needs to be relevant. That means that we should only collect data that is actually going to be used by somebody. So we see that there's a tendency to collect a lot of data and sometimes people are not entirely sure who is going to use that data for what purpose. But keep in mind that this is a big burden on the health worker usually or on the storekeepers to collect e this data, whether it is used or not. Then accessibility, that seems like um, very obvious that the data that is collected needs to be accessible to a wide range of stakeholders. Uh, one thing that we stress in DHIS2 is that data should also be available at the facility level, maybe not all data, but rather than having paper records, our dream is that one day the data that is, is collected digitally at the facility level and also available digitally at the facility level, because keep in mind that if you are a health worker or a physician at the hospital or clinic, you might also want to know which items are out of stock. And that would be great if you could go on your, and check that on your mobile phone rather than having to go to the pharmacy and ask or call them. Data completeness. So this is also a really important issue that all the required data fields that are configured in the data entry form as they call in DHS2, so in the reporting form, that they actually need to be filled. 
So you should avoid having what we uh, tend to see is there's many, many columns, but some of them are systematically not filled. Then it's maybe you should reconsider maybe uh, streamlining the data entry form um, if for some reason the data is not collected or if the, it is important to collect all the data, as I mentioned, if it's relevant, then you need to take measures to make sure that, that all the data fields are actually eventually filled in by all the facilities. And the data needs to be correct. That's obvious, but also very important. So that means that the, the data um, that is entered into THIS2 needs to correspond to, for example, the stock on hand or the stock distributed issued consumption, whatever it is called, actually corresponds to the numbers that of the respective transactions. So those have to match because you want to report what is actually happening in the real world. Something that is uh, maybe not as obvious, but it is really important is to have the correct data ranges. We do see quite a bit of negative numbers for the stock on hand. So by definition, stock on hand cannot be negative. And also transactions are usually recorded as positive values and normally they are recorded as integers. So this is something that is important and that can be easily checked in THIS2. The timeliness of reports. So the reports need to be submitted, usually collected at the end of month, but submitted as quickly as possible. So this is the one of the advantages. If you are collecting THIS2 logistics data on a mobile device in the facility, as soon as you have finished your data entry, and if you have a network and you synchronize your mobile device, then that data is available on the central server and available to anybody who has access to DHS2 instantly. So you avoid any de delay by sharing paper reports. So that's what we are aiming for in the long term. And regularity, so the, the reports need to be submitted each and every month, usually, or Maybe you have a daily reporting, but use it months and that needs to be done uh, consistently. Then the data use. So data logistics data is mainly used for stock management. Um, there's a lot of reporting requirements and uh, dashboard requirements, but ultimately keep in mind that logistics data still needs to be used primarily for managing your day-to-day -day stock. So you need to know what is in stock, the stock issues, the stock receipt to keep track of that accurately. Um, so the stock on hand and the transaction quantities, those are the most important uh, data that you, we are using in DHS2 for managing our stocks. And then stock replenishment, this is really important, sometimes not uh, given the um, importance that it should have. Because ultimately, everything that logisticians do professionally is to ensure that healthcare goods are available to patients. Um, so you need to make sure that the stock data is collected accurately and timely so that the calculations, whether it is done at the facility district level or other level, all the data, accurate data is available as quickly as possible and the, the data is updated so that the stock replenishment can be done correctly and uh, stocks are replenished accordingly. Then analytics, I think you're familiar um, for various data analysis, logistics service performance management, as we call it. So for measuring and managing the quality of logistics services, for example, the percentage of stock uh, items that are in stock. Data triangulation means relating HMS and LMIS data and uh, uh, using that for analysis. And then the reporting, as I mentioned, I think you're all familiar with that for the re routine reporting and analysis um, according to the, the policies and national leads, needs. But keep in mind the ultimate purpose of all of the data quality analysis and the data use is ensuring that no child is left without a vaccine because it is out of stock in the facility. That's something that should always guide us. That's also why we stress the importance of stock replenishment because re analysis, data collection, analysis reporting, that's all necessary and good, but ultimately it needs to result in having the vaccine in the refrigerator when it is needed to vaccinate a child. Okay, right. So um, very quickly with the data quality tools that are in, available in THIS2. 
So the value type, so you can block certain values. For example, if somebody were to attempt to enter negative uh, value for stock on hand, then you can set the system to prevent this so that rather than having to check data and correct it, it the, the wrong data entry is corrected on the spot. Then you have several tools after entering the data. So there's a tool called the validation rules that I will demonstrate briefly that can pick up negative values, can pick up missing values or blank data fields, inconsistent values. So you can do quite sophisticated calculations and calculate whether the stock balances with the stock on hand, beginning of the month, the receipt, the stock issues, whether it all adds up or not. And you can do outlier detection for distributed quantities. So if you have very large quantities that are likely to be a typing error because you type 10,000 instead of 100, you can detect them. And then finally, you have the analytics. You can again calculate stock discrepancies. You can do uh, have the missing data values, count and put them on the dashboard and reporting completeness and the timeliness are integrated native functionality in the DHR store, DHI store core. So very briefly in our performance management concept, there's much to say, but we have these basically these three categories, symptoms, diagnosis, and therapy to relate to the work of health professionals that are often dealing with these issues. So the symptoms is called a manifestation indicator that just indicates there's a problem. So for example, if you have a stock out, you obviously have a problem, but it's just a symptom like a headache. It doesn't indicate the reason for your stock out. You Then you have we have the diagnosis that would be analyzing the root cause and determining the underlying problem. problem. So usually this will take a professional national ELMS system. There's not a lot of root cause analysis that can be done in DHS2, but it can give some hints. And then the most importantly, you need to take corrective action to correct the problem. So we don't want to just report and analyze stockouts. We want to actually fix the problem and reduce the number of stockouts. And that takes some kind of corrective action. And in most cases, that will also be measures that the supply managers need to take um, in the national ELMS system. So the diagnosis without the therapy doesn't lead to any improvements. So there's no purpose in just every month reporting that we have stock out and that they are increasing or decreasing. Somebody needs to take some action. But in order to design, to develop a suitable therapy, you still need a diagnosis. And that does require determining symptoms. So we're not saying that um, collecting symptoms um, is, is useless. On the contrary, it is necessary. We're just saying, don't leave it just with a symptom detection. Somebody still needs to take corrective action. And a uh, last point is that I will present, there's also some symptomatic treatment. Symptomatic treatment, like giving, um, if somebody has broken their leg and you give them uh, analgetic, that doesn't um, solve the underlying medical condition, but symptomatic treatment is still something that is necessary and can be part of the therapy. So keep in mind that uh, you, we need to fix the underlying problem, but you also might have to temporarily, hopefully, only treat the symptoms. So I'm going to be very practical after this kind of theoretical and uh, introduction in, in the, um, presenting four measures, um, four actions that anybody can take um, with DHIS2 already. So this is the overview. Somebody during a conference asked a very good question from all the things, the presentations that you have seen in the last two days. What is going to change Monday morning when you go to your office? What are you going to do differently than to what you have been doing until now? And these are four very practical things that you can do with Thrive 360 or DHIS2 uh, stock data analysis. Uh, very practical and fairly simple. So I'm going to share this, the missing values, stock outs, uh, the stock coverage time for the shortages and almost expiry. And the last row is basically the courage treatment. For that, you will need a national LMIS system to complement analysis in Thrive 360 DHIS2. Okay, so first of all, missing values, very simple. You have a screenshot of what it actually looks like in DHIS2. So this is, is taken from an actual DHIS2 data entry form, you can see that on the left side, 
there are six data fields and the seventh data field is yes, no option. And of those five fields are filled and two are missing. And you can see a screenshot below um, inserted on the validation results. And you can see left side uh, missing values is two. So that means that out of the seven, two values are missing. And good news, we just had a demo on the V41 that is coming out in May. There you will even have a list that will indicate itemized list. It will not only say two data values are missing, but it will give you exact list, PCG vaccine, uh, those is opened is missing. And so this is very easy to, uh, to check. You just need to one off uh, configure your validation rules and then press the button run validation that can be done at any time with any, uh, for any facility any month. And it will show you a list of all the missing data values. And that hopefully will prompt then to either the facility can check themselves or it can be done uh, with some advice. You can see in the right side now, all the data fields are filled in and the validation result is a green tick as it should be. That means all the data that should be collected is actually available. So that's the basis because of course, if you are missing data and you calculate indicators, especially when you aggregate the indicators across items, across facilities, but you're missing data fields, then those um, indicators are not going to give you correct results. So this is just, uh, as I mentioned, to increase the, the data completeness. And the hope is that by just visualizing and giving feedback or users uh, obtaining the feedback themselves from this analytics, that will raise awareness and uh, hopefully everyone will be motivated to uh, have 100% data report uh, completeness and eventually that data will um, increase, uh, uh, improve. So it will take some time, but eventually that's a good way to monitor and to have accurate figures to know whether is it only one item that was missing data or is it all items? Is it many facilities? Is it a whole district and so on? And this is a problem that you can actually fix in uh, uh, using DHIS2 analytics by eventually having 100% um, completeness. So then um, the next issue is uh, stockout. So if you have a stockout, yes, I'm sorry, I skipped one slide. So um, stockouts, all of the screenshots you are seeing are actually taken from the um, Niger Thrive 360 database, which uh, Barnabas presented and configured. I will not explain all the charts in detail, but basically DHS2 Thrive 360 allows you to identify facilities, vaccines, which are out of stock and the corrective action, the um, um, preliminary um, uh, corrective action is to restock those vaccines as quickly as possible. So you have it at high level, you can see the districts that are out of stock. You can basically determine from a list what vaccines are out of stock, where are they out of stock? So which facilities, which LGAs are low on stock? You can see how many facilities are out of stock. You can determine on the pivot table on the right side, whether the number of facilities with stock out is increasing or decreasing. So are you improving in the stock supply? How long have they been out of stock? You can also see that from the, from the pivot table. And you have, can also have like on the right side, the column chart, you can have an overview. You can see the number of facilities that have stock out of what vaccine. And you can see there is a, a declining trend, which is good means because it means that the number of stock outs is decreasing. And you have, can have a very good overview and you can do that analysis at the district LGA uh, provincial or national level. So this is something that can be done immediately and that has uh, good value because every stock out should be basically treated um, as an emergency and should be resolved as quickly as possible. So I mentioned that in DHIS2, that's mainly for symptomatic analysis. Here um, in the, the small um, font, you can see that if you have isolated um, stockouts at a few facilities and they're very limited in time, then probably that is like a temporary problem. Maybe there was a large increase of the number of vaccinations 
where there was a glitch with a delivery. If you have several stock out at several facilities over a prolonged time, that indicates an upstream supply problem. You could also uh, use the Thrive 360 analysis to kind of locate the problem, either in terms of what vaccines are mostly affected, uh, what times were mostly affected, was a period of the year where there were many stockouts, and what geographic level was mostly affected. So was there a certain district where there were many stockouts and other uh, districts are doing very well? So that might help to narrow down the, the problem. And what you can do is um, principle uh, uh, simple. So you need to expedite open order. So if an order was made and not yet delivered, um, request that it is delivered faster than uh, according to the regular schedule. If there are no open orders, then you need to place additional orders and ask for immediate delivery. And the other possibility is to redistribute from other facilities, which I will present in a minute. And to come back to my to our logistics performance management framework, it is a symptomatic um, treatment because if you don't take uh, corrective action, treat the underlying root cause, then those stockouts are likely to persist or recur, but it's still necessary. Of course, if you have a stock out, you need to do something immediately. Correcting the uh, inventory control system might take longer or analysis, but so you need to do something immediately, of course. So, okay, I think I, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so stockouts, um, the next measure is preventing Im uh, imminent stockouts. So as a supply chain manager, my objective would be first to resolve all the stockouts. So that means that there are currently not, no stockouts. And my next concern would then be even if all the facility, if there's no stockouts uh, at any facilities, then I'm still concerned that as there might be some imminent stockouts. And the way to look at that is um, compare the number of stocks, uh, number of uh, weeks or months for which uh, stock is left, and then compare that with the expected next delivery. So for example, if the facility is making monthly orders and it's the beginning of the month and they have one month of less than one month of stock left, then probably they will have a stock out before the next delivery arrives. And in the table on the left, also taken from Thrive 360, you can see the stock coverage time. So you can determine, let's say you're looking at Ab Ahara Primary Health Center has 0 0.21 months of stock left. So that's six days of stock. So unless there's a plan to have a delivery within the next six days, it's going to run out of stock by the end of the month. And that helps you, same measures, um, corrective action, expedite open orders, place additional emergency orders, and redistribute from other facilities. So this is a short-term prevention because a stockout has not occurred yet. And if you take the measures and they are effective quickly enough, then you will actually prevent the stockout. But still keep in mind that stockout is likely going to recur if the root cause is not treated. So the last... Um, uh, issue I want to present is the redistribution of stock. So already mentioned. So here you can see on the map, again, that is actually taken from Thrive 360. So you can see that the dark red facilities are those that have a stock out currently for BCG vaccine. And you can see on a map, the geographical vicinity of facilities in purple that have more than 12 months stock. So those facilities are likely <clears throat> to be able to spare some of their vaccines to uh, alleviate the immediate uh, stock out or the shortage. And you can see that on the map um, easily. Then you can go on also on the pivot table and see how much stock is available to spare between the facilities. So again, something very practical, um, but very useful to have it on the map. So you identify nearby facilities with stock outs and shortages. Um, identify facility with excess stock and then try to organize to redistribute the stock to uh, resolve that immediate stock out. Uh, stock out. And keep in mind that um, the quantity that a facility can spare it depends on the average distribution. So the average consumption, the higher it is, the more stock they can share. So this is short term prevention as um, before for the expediting, but still necessary. 
And finally, um, the root cause analysis is still necessary. So this is the analysis of what leads to stockouts. Actually, there's not that many aspects that lead to a stockout. So you have the lead time, you have the inventory control policy and the uh, irregular orders. That is what leads to ultimately to stockouts. And those are also the uh, factors, the parameters that need to be addressed. Um, so the immediate uh, short-term measures, as I mentioned, is detecting, reporting, stockouts, expediting open orders, emergency order redistributing, and um, for treating the root cause, uh, um, re root causes to prevent stockouts from re and shortage from recurring. Um, you need to analyze the lead time, so that's why you need a national LMI system and as I said, distribution system. Very important, you need to study the inventory control system, so the parameters that you're using, like the lead time, the review period, the safety stock levels, to identify if they are adjusted to the requirements, and if not, then uh, adjust them. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, um, for determining and implementing the curative treatment, so the ultimate therapy requires a professional national ELMS system that ideally is integrated with DHS2. So, and my last slide is just to uh, mention that um, as Augustine already presented, there's other metrics indicators that you can measure with DHS2 that I'm just listing, list, listing here. And uh, you can go to our sandbox where you can explore our tools. And we have also created some visualization libraries at the facility district province and country level, same as for Thrive 360. And you can have find some inspiration on visualizations if you are missing some, including the offline analytics that is available on mobile devices. And with that, I hand over to Preno for a few minutes for some questions and wrapping up comments. Thanks for your attention. Great, thank you so much, George. Thank you to Augustine and Barnabas as well, who uh, began the presentations. Um, I think we had quite a lot of engagement and questions in the chat. Uh, I think more or less all of them were were, were replied to. Um, uh, you can always reach out to us uh, at any point through the community of practice. There's a section specific to supply chain and LMIS. You can also reach us at LMIS at dhis2.org. Um, I don't see any specific question that we need to clarify further beyond uh, what we've written in the chat. Um, but I think to highlight maybe from each presentation that Augustine really showed what currently is available in those specific countries that were uh, uh, analyzed and what's possible in terms of improving the data and maybe doing further deep dives to see exactly how the configurations are being done and what's being used. I think it was interesting to note that under half the countries actually had dashboards configured for the data being collected. So um, a lot of potential to actually make use of that data. Uh, for Barnabas, um, everything that was presented was native DHS2 using the Nigeria NHMIS instance. Um, it didn't go into any data collection procedures or any forms. There were no changes made to the underlying uh, uh, structure already existing. It was simply building visualizations with existing data uh, and bringing in a few additional data sources. Uh, so what we're really curious to see is how the operationalization of those dashboards uh, will be happening in Nigeria, working closely with the UNICEF team, with the National Logistics Working Group, and the different teams working on immunization supply chain to see how can they connect to um, actions that will actually improve stock availability, which then I think George really went uh, in detail on how this data can help with both symptomatic and underlying issues. And again, with the focus on improving um, vaccine coverage and improving overall health outcomes. And I think it's really a, a lot of good work that we can build on um, in the future. Do not hesitate to reach out to us for any more questions and the presentations and recordings will all be shared with the participants also in the community. Thanks again to the presenters and um, we'll be in touch with all of you. Bye for now.